Lambert Eaton Myasthenic Syndrome, or LEMS, is a rare autoimmune disorder of the neuromuscular junction. Now, it's a terrible disease that's often associated with small cell lung cancer. It presents with the classic triad of war features, including weakness of the muscles, autonomic dysfunction, and no reflexes. Let's focus on its pathogenesis. Now, LEMS is really an issue of the neuromuscular junction. Normally, when an action potential arrives down the nerve that innervates a muscle, it activates voltage-gated calcium channels, which suck in calcium. This triggers vesicles filled with acetylcholine to fuse to the presynaptic membrane, releasing their contents into the synapse. The acetylcholine then binds to the postsynaptic cells, causing a contraction. Now, LEMS is an autoimmune condition where antibodies destroy these presynaptic voltage-gated calcium channels. These autoantibodies can arise from a couple of things. Firstly, cancer-associated LEMS. This accounts for 50% of all cases. Some tumors, especially small cell lung cancer, which contains high numbers of these voltage-gated channels, induce the production of antibodies that target the channels. This phenomenon is known as a paroneoplastic syndrome. Secondly, non-cancer-associated LEMS. This is where anti-VGCC antibodies are produced as a part of a more general autoimmune state. This can occur secondary to diseases like rheumatoid arthritis or autoimmune thyroid disease. Let's focus now on its clinical features. The onset of symptoms is usually insidious with a gradual progression over time. It typically starts at the ages of 50 to 60. Weakness is a cardinal feature. Classically, it begins in the proximal legs, causing a waddling gait and difficulty with climbing stairs. This subsequently progresses and affects the proximal arms. Now, the weakness is typically symmetrical. Autoimmune dysfunction is often present, with dry mouth from reduced saliva being the most common example. Other examples, including poor papillary light responses and erectile dysfunction, are also possible. Areflexia is a key finding. Tendon reflexes are usually absent, but Importantly, they can be recovered after vigorous muscle activation. This is known as post-exercise facilitation. Now, differentials for this terrible disease can be remembered with BAM. This stands for botulism, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, and myasthenia gravis. Moving on to how to investigate LEMS, consider three categories. Firstly, serological blood tests. You should look for autoantibodies specifically against the PQ-type voltage-gated calcium channels. These are reported in 95% of patients, although titers don't correlate with disease activity, and by itself, it's not diagnostic. Secondly, electrodiagnostic investigations. Nerve conduction studies focus on the electrical activity of nerves and detect differentials such as nerve compression, whereas repetitive nerve stimulation focuses on the integrity of the neuromuscular junction transmission and can detect problems with the muscle response to nerve stimulation. In LEMS, nerve conduction studies may show reduced amplitude of the compound muscle action potential, while repetitive nerve stimulation often shows a decremental response, which means that the muscle response decreases with each successive stimulus. Finally, consider investigations for the underlying cause. For example, imaging including a chest x-ray and a CT to look for evidence of small cell lung cancer or other tumors. Let's move on to its management. Now, I like to categorize these into three categories of treatment. Firstly, managing an underlying malignancy. This can often result in substantial clinical improvements in symptoms and might include surgery, chemotherapy, or radiotherapy. Secondly, symptomatic therapy. First-line options focus on augmenting neuromuscular transmission. Agents include amifampridine and pyridostigmine. Amifampridine works by blocking potassium channels. 
This significantly prolongs presynaptic depolarization, which enhances calcium entry and thereby improves the release of acetylcholine. Finally, immunotherapy can be considered for refractory weakness. Regardless of its etiology, LEMS, in theory, is an immune issue, so immunomodulation just makes sense. Initially, treatment with IVIG, or intravenous immunoglobulin, is recommended. Other options might include prednisolone or azathioprine. Let's now summarize all of this with a couple of mnemonics. LEMS is a terrible disease that causes war features, including weakness of the muscle, autonomic dysfunction, and no reflexes. Differentials go BAM, this stands for botulism, ALS, and myasthenia gravis. Finally, management can be remembered because the options are manic. This stands for manage the underlying etiology, usually the cancer. N is for neuromuscular junction augmentation with amitheroprine, IVIG, and C is for corticosteroids. If you like mnemonics, check out this playlist for the videos all have really good ways to memorize stuff in medicine. Thanks for watching Townsend Teachings.